Hey, everybody, this is Tom Sharpling, and welcome to Best Show Gems, the best of the best show on WFMU. Basically, this is a podcast we're going to do every other week, giving you a uh, bite sized version of all the mirth and mayhem that goes on every week on the best show on WFMU. So please check out this exciting clip. Oh my god, I'm looking at the uh, the security camera. There's somebody outside the door. It's like a really... I see like an a really old guy and like a shopping cart or something behind him. Well, I guess he can't get in the building anyway. Oh my, he's got it. He's smashing the door down. Oh my God, that's like a, what is that? That's a chain. He's actually chaining his way through the door. Oh my God. Oh, it's the... It's the gorge. Oh, no. He's been on the road for, what, three years now? Now he's coming to get me. Mike, I think the gorge is in the building. He's moving He's moving very slow, though, if that's any consolation. I think that chaining just took everything out of him. He's actually, now I see him leaning against the wall. Looks like he's really sucking wind. Um... Two oh one two oh nine nine three six eight. I'm not going to worry about this. I think at the rate he's moving now, I can probably get out of the building after eleven o'clock, and he will still not be up here. I could probably just duck past him in the in the in the uh, in the uh, stairwell. <laughs> FMU, you're on the air. Hi, Tom. My name's Joe. Hey, Joe. How are you? I'm doing very well. How are you? Doing all right. Very good to hear it. Uh, I was calling in with the dumbest thing I ever did. What is it? Let's hear it, Joe. I, I was listening on Saturday, and I'm all prepared. So Okay, you've had three days to get ready for this. <laughs> That's right. You're going to slay us all. Uh, I locked myself in a zoo exhibit with the mountain lion. Wait, this actually, this this is pretty good. What did you do? I locked myself into a zoo exhibit with a mountain lion. What? Uh, what? What zoo exhibit? First of all. Well, uh, this is about this is a while ago. This is like 1993. Uh, I was working at a zoo uh, as a zookeeper, and we had previously our mountain lions had been in a very small exhibit. We built a very new large exhibit. And uh, th- we moved this mountain lion in. Her name was Contessa. And she was, you know, had always seemed very friendly. And so I thought, you know what? I'm going to go out into that exhibit with Contessa and say hello. Because she seems very nice. She's been in captivity for many years. And she seems like, you know, pretty friendly for a mountain lion. And, now you uh, work. You work at this zoo. I worked at the zoo. Yes. And it was your idea. I'm going to walk out, and and that mountain lion looks friendly. Yes. yes. She, she had always seemed very friendly. Okay. It, she, you know, uh, in the in the much smaller exhibit, which which I couldn't get into, perhaps for a reason. And uh, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to go out there, but I'm going to keep the door open. In what capacity were you working at this zoo? I'm sorry? In what capacity were you an employee of this zoo? I was a zookeeper. Really? Yes. This is is what your training as a zookeeper taught you. That animal looks friendly. I think I'll go out and say hi. Well, I I wasn't ever technically trained. Uh, Oh, wow. It was was a summer job, and then someone quit, and then I applied for the full-time job. I had been there for two months, so I figured, all right. He hadn't locked himself in an exhibit with a mountain lion yet. What zoo is this? The Henson Robinson Zoo in Springfield, Illinois. This sounds like a bad uh, bad movie. It sounds like it would be a bad Jim Brewer movie. 
Yeah, except I didn't, you know, use any goat, funny goat boy voices or heavy metal references. But yeah, no, I, so I went in there with Contessa, and she actually was, in fact, very friendly uh, to start. Mm -hmm. But then... Well, and she sort of acted sort of like a cat would, you know, sort of, uh, it was a hot day, and I, I was wearing shorts, and she started uh -huh. licking my leg. And I thought, wow, this is really neat. This now, is. And how big is, is how big is this mountain lion? Uh, she was about thirteen years old, uh, about one hundred and seventy-five pounds. One hundred seventy-five pounds. <laughs> she, uh, yeah, she was very large. She and and. Uh, so, you know, so but, but but she was very friendly. So then, where does the story go south? Well, she was licking my leg, licking the sweat off my leg. I, oh, this is great. This is, I'm having a moment here with uh, with yeah. Contessa the mountain right. lion. Yeah. Yep. And then she sort of started gnawing on my knee. And I thought, this is not, this isn't good. This is sort of a step too far, which I hadn't anticipated. Mm -hmm. you and didn't then she sort of started gnawing on my knee and a little harder. And I thought, I should leave now. Yeah, that was a good idea. Once the mountain lion started gnawing on you, you decided to get out. And you were locked in? Well, not at that point. I had the door open. So I, I was being smart. So, Well, that is very smart. So that way the mountain lion could run out. Well, yeah. That, oh, what a, what, in, a, in what an incredibly intelligent I, plan. I suppose. What an incredibly intelligent plan. Yeah, <laughs> I left the door wide open so I could get out. But the mountain lion can't. Oh, oh no! It was only it was only open a crack yeah. so that I could then sort of yeah. swiftly move around and get mm -hmm. back in yeah. if need be. Exactly. But once she started gnawing on my knee, I thought, all right, as I said, this is bad. So I I tried to push her off of my knee, and she didn't like that so much. Hmm. Okay. And and. That's when she sort of, her claws came out oh. and digging into my leg. And that's when I thought, all right, time to go. And I had a brief moment of panic, and I hit the door, and it closed. <laughs> Locking me inside the exhibit. And now what was the mountain lion doing then? Like, uh, like she was hissing? becoming more and more aggravated uh -huh. and started <laughs> clawing my leg. So, so, so when I, that I actually did, I start. I was so all of a sudden I was bleeding, and I'm locked oh. into this exhibit. And who opened the door for you? Well, I had had slight foresight, and I didn't do it until there was another zookeeper, one of my coworkers, was cleaning the ex other exhibits in, uh, inside. So, how long were you in there with the mountain lion? It felt like an hour. How long was it really? Probably two minutes tops. It, it all have it's like fun to less fun to extreme terror in about two minutes. You and congratulations, yeah. young man. The topic was well, called the dumbest thing you've ever done, and you you rose to the challenge. Wait. Hold on. Oh, my God. Wait. It's the gorge. Oh, no. Is no, no, no. Get out. That's the gorge? Uh, get out, Tom. Do you know the... I'm actually scared. I'm, yeah, I'm complaining. I'm talking about you and a mountain lion. Now, all of a sudden, I got the gorge in here. Don't, don't get locked in. Don't get locked in. Great. I'm taking advice from you. Okay, goodbye. <laughs> I told you I'd be back. Oh, it's you. Oh, my God. <laughs> How many steps do you have here? <laughs> it's it's <gasps> one, one flight. Are you... <laughs> oh, man. That is tough stuff. Are you okay? Define okay. Let, you... let me gather myself before I whip you. Oh, man. Oh, 
Jeez. It's the gorge. The, uh, for people who don't know, you, Roland Gorchnik, yeah. a.k.a. the gorge, you are... Uh, you, the coolest. You're the cool. Okay, you're the coolest, and you also uh, refer to yourself as the real life Fonzie. That's right. So you are. Uh, we had you on the show a long time ago. Yeah. And you basically got mad at me. It's easy not to. And then you. Uh, I remember you got on your rascal scooter or something. You were going to drive up here to, to, to kill me. Now you might want to you might want to put those uh, headphones on over there. I know what cans are. Hang on. Okay, there you go. Now you can hear. You probably hear me a little better. Ugh, I don't like it. So then you, you were like in Memphis. Was that the last time? That's the last time I talked to you. Yeah. You were down there, I think it was with that uh, Skag Wine Sack. Yeah. Creep. And, uh, I don't even know, what were you, were helping him or something? I was trying to help him solve some crimes down there, yeah. We had a falling out, though. What, what, what did you have a falling out over? Well, I made a doghouse out of beer bottles for his pooch, Reggie. Uh-huh. And he stiffed me on the payment for it. <laughs> Why, why did he stiff you on the payment? Well, he said it wasn't safe. What, the, the, you made your little, uh, well, it's a doghouse made of beer bottles. Yeah, I mean, it only fell apart twice. Did it fall apart on Reggie? It fell apart on me. I lived there for eight days. You were, you were living in the doghouse. Yeah, it was actually the fourth doghouse I've ever lived in. <laughs> wow, I didn't, I didn't realize you... The doghouse living was an option. Oh, absolutely, yeah. So he and I kind of got into it, and uh, we had a big fight one night. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I passed out in the doghouse, yeah, Skag put me and my rascal on this on this barge, and he sent me up the Mississippi. The Mississippi River. So it's you getting. So you were you were asleep or knocked out or what? I was passed out for a couple days. From from what? Well, beer. Your how much beer did you drink to pass out for a couple days? Forty eight. <laughs> Forty eight beers in four hours. Why? Wow, I <laughs> I guess that makes sense. I would understand. I guess. 48 beers in four hours. That is enough to yeah. put you under. But you know the joke's on him. How's that? Well, I put a bomb in his basement. Yeah. He's probably, he probably bit it. Oh, oh, oh great. Well, that's, that's I can charming. only guess. Yeah, that's charming. So that, 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 you put a bomb in his basement before he put you on the barge, apparently. So was you struck first. Well, I knew he was going, he was going to get me on the, uh, on the payment. Okay. Yeah. So you decided, fair enough, I'll blow him up. Absolutely. All's fair, right? So I'm on the barge. Yeah. Going up the old miss. Uh-huh. And uh, I wake up finally. And I start yelling at the guy driving the barge to let me off. Uh-huh. And uh -huh. guess what he did? I, I got to say, honestly, I have absolutely no idea. He started shooting a harpoon at me. Like in defense? Well, he must have thought I was a seal or something. Maybe some kind of big muskrat. Uh huh. Because I was yelling, "Let me off! Let me off! You wow. creep!" So you're yelling at him. Yeah. And he thought you were some sort of animal. Yeah. Why? Why would he think that? All I was doing was yelling, "Let me off! Let me off! You creep!" I have no idea why he would think you were not human. I don't know. So we get kind of close to shore. I kind of waited till it got close to shore. Yeah. And I managed to la launch my, my rascal off the barge. So your rascal was still on the barge? Yeah. Okay. Skag was kind enough to put that on, too. All right. So now you get your rascal. You, you it ended up on land? Yeah, I launched myself on the rascal onto the shore. Like a jump. Exactly. Yeah, wow. Somewhere in the middle of Missouri. Really? Yeah. 
Wow. Uh, that's so so you're in the middle of Missouri and yeah. and then how how did you This is still a long time ago. This is like still 3 years ago I'm assuming Absolutely, something like that. Absolutely, yeah. And you end up uh what still took you three years to get here? What happened? So you end up in Missouri. Well, listen and learn, jerk. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. You're you're right. Let me let me listen. I like the sound of that. Say it again. Oh, uh, say what? You're right. You're you're right. I love it. That's like uh, a, that's like a, the greatest moon glow song. Oh, to my ears. I hate it. What? So anyway. I get rescued by this truck driver who just happened to be on the riverbank, you know, making water. Mm -hmm. So he ends up driving me out to Hollywood, mm -hmm. or as I like to call it, Weirdo Wood. I, I lost you there for a second. We Weirdo Wood? Yeah. Weirdo Wood. Weirdo Wood. Not. What don't you get? Well, you, what are you calling? Because there's weirdos out there. Yeah. Well, I. You know, a lot of people when they when they when they want to imply that there's weirdos in Hollywood, would they call it Holly weird? That's stupid. I don't get it. Wh <laughs> why? What you you Hollywood? Weirdo wood. Ho Hollywood, Holly weird. Hey Mickey, what do you like better? Weird Hollywood, or Holly Weird. Well, just listen. I, I, you know what? All due respect, I think anyone can understand. Listen, Hollywood, Holly Weird, Hollywood, Holly Weird, Hollywood, Weird Hollywood. No, there's no flow to that at all. I love it. It's terrible. What? No, it's not. Hollywood. Weirdo Holly wood. Hollywood. Weirdo wood. Holly weird. Ew. Hollywood. Ew. Holly weird. That's like Holly a Pat Boone record to my ears. Well, you know what? I, I. Okay. Can I continue? So you're in weirdo wood, exactly. as you call it. That's what. Yeah, totally. Okay. So I get to meet my mortal enemy out there. Uh huh. Who's that? Come on. You're mortal. Who do I hate more than anybody besides you? Oh, oh, yeah. Wow. Are you? T you're talking about Fonzie, like the the TV, like Henry Winkler? Yeah. Man, I hate him. So you actually met Henry Winkler, the guy who played. According to you, plays the TV version of your life on Happy Days and got rich on it. Ugh. Don't get me started, man. So you met him. I'll turn this place into a car wash. I, I don't even know what that means. Oh, you'll learn. Okay. Okay. I mean, does that have to do with smashing the... How many walls do a car wash have? Um... It's it's got two like two yeah. uh, two walls and a ceiling. No, oh, that don't count. Okay. Yeah. So I'd knock out two of these walls. With what? What do you think? My chain. With your chain. Yeah. Okay. Let, <laughs> you know what? Again, you met you. Okay. Please don't turn this place into a car wash. Okay. I was about to. I could see that you were starting you to... You could see it in my eyes. You, I could see it in the eyes. You, you were trying to get up. Yeah. Still a little winded. Yeah, you seem very it was weak. like five stories. It was one story. Oh. And it was one small staircase. No, it wasn't. One small flight of stairs. Oh, my God. So you meet Henry Winkler. You know, he's bigger than you, than you think he's going to be. Really? Yeah. I always thought he was kind of... On the small side of things. Well, I'm 5'1". I used to be 5'7". Mm -hmm. But, you know, you shrink over the years if you, Wait, drink, you, if you drink too much. You, if, if you, you, you shrunk six inches? Yeah. Because you drank so much. 48 beers in four hours for 40 years or so. And oh that'll, that'll shrink you. Absolutely, yeah. So, so, 
So Henry Winkler, where where was this that you met him? Um, his bathroom. I, I, I don't know what you mean. In his house? Yeah. Wow, well, funny funny that you ran into him there, huh? Yeah, not well, you know. Uh-huh. He threw me out. Well, you you went into his house. How uh, unannounced, I'm assuming? Well, yeah, I I, I found one of those star maps. Uh-huh. That, that says where the stars live. Yeah. I wouldn't call him a star though. You wouldn't. Not at all. Okay, so you're so you don't consider Henry Winkler to be a star. Not at all. So he calls the cops on me. Mhm. They came. Man, I got one really good chain whip in though. On who? On the cops and him. But then you know what happened next? What? They got a bunch of really big uh uh, you know, billy club whips on me. <laughs> About okay. a thousand of them. So you got beat down by the L.A. police. Well, yeah. <laughs> Are you okay from no, that? Uh, no. No? No. I have to walk with my hands a lot of the time. You walk with your hands? I kind of have to pull myself, yeah. You mean just like, like on the ground? Yeah. Wow. It's sick. I, I, I don't want to see that. But you know, before that all happened... I did an exercise video. Uh huh. Yeah. You did it out when you were out in L.A. Yeah. Uh huh. It's called "Get Torqued with the Gorch." Get, get, get torqued with the Gorch. Yeah. That's, that's your exercise video. Oh yeah. Uh huh. And what? Uh, tell, tell me about "Get Torqued with the Gorch" and how come I've never heard of this? It's out there, you know. Basically, it's three hours of me opening and closing this lazy boy over and over again. You know the leg part. Uh huh. Yeah. And that—that's the exercise. Yeah, it really builds up the legs. You mean when the when the lazy boy opens? Yeah, like that ottoman thing. And the leg, your legs are just going along for the ride. No, they're pumping it. So you're clo- opening and closing the leg, the the like the extended part of the lazy boy with your legs absolutely you put one foot under the thing mm-hmm. and one over and you just kind of pump it with the one leg it builds up resistance for how long three hours it's riveting it's i'm sorry riveting yeah i'm sure it it, it sounds it sounds very intense are you getting smart what do you mean S- you know smart with me Making like a, you know what? Making with the wisecracks. I um, don't like it. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know what? You're right. I, well, I was being a little bit of a wise guy. Do you see it? That's that's a chain. Yup. Uh huh. Oh. Do you want to eat it? No. Okay. Okay. I'll st- I'll stop being such a wise guy. So anyway, through get torqued. Uh huh. I ended up meeting a very famous uh, world-class director. Like a famous Hollywood director? Oh, yeah. Can I guess who it is? Sure. Um, can you give me a hint? He's world famous, probably the best at what he does. Um, Scorsese? Who? Martin Scorsese. No? No. Okay, Steven Spielberg? What? No. Um, I d- uh, think the biggest there is, the best. The biggest director yeah. that there is. Yeah. Let me think. The biggest director, Michael Bay. What's that? Um, he directed uh, Armageddon and Transformers. Don't know it. Don't know it. Um, biggest there is. Yeah. I don't know. You got me stumped. Oh, <laughs> you're kind of. Running the chain yep. through your hands. I'm, I'm Do you want to taste it? No, I don't want to taste All the right. chain. I don't know. TLS! Oh, I, I do know who Say that is. Say it! TLS, Trent L. Strauss. The man. Uh-huh. The greatest. He's the, gra- he, he's the greatest? Absolutely. We wrote a film together. You wrote a film with Trent L. Strauss? Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow! What <laughs> is it? That was this. Ba- this is based on the appeal of the uh, the lazy boy. Absolutely. Thing? Yeah. 
Uh huh. What uh, get torqued with the gorch? Yeah. And what? Uh, what's this movie that you wrote with Trent L. Strauss? It's called The Lazy Boy Killer. Okay. It's about this evil recliner. Uh huh. Yeah. How? Uh, tell. What do you mean an evil recliner? Well, it's about this recliner, and uh, when it's in transit, uh huh, it gets it gets caught up in this evil tornado that comes from a nearby cowboy burial ground. A cowboy burial ground. Yeah, they're all over the place. You mean like, uh, okay, I'm assuming because Indian... Okay, move on, fine, fair enough. So anyway, the spirit of the evil cowboys enters the recliner... Uh-huh. ...and the evilness gets sealed in by this, uh, by this lightning bolt. So it gets... So... So this recliner, you said it's already evil. Yeah. To start with. Right. How, how is it evil? The devil made it. How does anything get evil? <laughs> so there's a recliner right. in this movie. Right. And the devil made the recliner. Right. It's totally plausible. But so this recliner that the devil made, you said it gets caught up in what, a tornado? Yeah. An evil tornado. From... Hell. A cowboy burial ground. Oh, from a, I'm sorry. A cowboy. So, so the tornado, this evil tornado from a cowboy burial ground. Right. Gets, the recliner gets caught up in that. Yep. And then the, the spirit, you said something about the spirit of the cowboys. Yeah. Enters the chair. Right. And gets sealed in. Right. By. A lightning bolt. Wow. Could could any more happen um, to that chair? Well, yeah. So this is the plot of the movie, that this chair, all this stuff happens to this chair? No. What happens is when people sit in it, uh -huh. they get devoured, and their skeletons get spit out. <laughs> wow. That sounds like a great movie. I gotta say, the ending was a little weak, though. <laughs> what was the ending? Well, the way it ends, people finally realize that if they don't sit in it, they don't get eaten. So that's just how the movie ends. It just kind of piddles out. <laughs> wow. Probably because we ran out of budget. So, oh, you filmed this. Oh, you just yeah. Didn't, you yeah. just didn't write this. No. How much of a budget did you have? Well, 20000 <laughs> $20,000? Yeah. $20,000. So you make a... And... I'm amazed that you were able to even get a recliner for twenty thousand. Like for the, this is a fancy chair that's made by the devil. Well, we really didn't get a recliner. <laughs> what what uh, what did you use instead of a recliner? Well, it's kind of like uh, these two chairs, you know, like from a, from a pool, uh, like a a table, you know, like uh -huh. a card table. Uh huh. And we put like fuzzy stuff on them, you know, some kind of like covering. Uh huh. Burnt orange. Oh, did we argue about that color? Wow, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was a component of this. Oh, thing. totally, yeah. yeah. So, so where can I see this Lazy Boy movie? Well, I've been told that you can find it on the internet. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, it's out there on the internet. Not really, no. It will be soon, I think, as soon as they can afford to like have it downloadable. Uh huh. Yeah, but Trent wants to have the downloads cost a thousand dollars. To make up for the cost. So he's hoping that 20,000 people down... I mean, 20 people 20, download... Yeah. yeah. He's hoping 20 people download this Lazy Boy movie. Lazy Boy Killer. And yeah. So people just ignore the chair and, and that they don't get eaten. People will probably bail by that point watching it, yeah. Yeah. You know what else I filmed? What's that? Do you know that guy Chris Angel? Yeah, you did a lot of filming. Oh, yeah, I'm totally photogenic. Don't you think... I guess it depends on what you're, what, what someone's going for. Oh, the chain. Oh, boy. Okay. You're yep. coming close. Yes, you're very photogenic. A chain Mr. buffet. Gor Mr. Gorchnik, you're uh. very photogenic. So you're saying you, you, you filmed something, what was that about? That guy Chris Angel, he does those, those mind freak things. Yeah, yeah, the magician guy. I did one, very similar, for the Shout Network. Uh-huh. It's called Brain Bash. Brain bash. Yeah. So, 
And you you were the like the Chris Angel type guy on oh, it. Oh yeah, but better, way cooler. I had no idea you were a musician. What? I mean, I, I'm a musician. But I know you're. I know you're not a musician. I'm a I, singer. Well, I've heard some of your music. You want to hear something right now? Sure. We're gonna have a chain fight tonight. Everything's going to be all right. You got the gorge by your side. I'm polishing my chain. We're going to do it right tonight. Oh. You all right? Define all right. Are you going Again. to... Again. <laughs> are you going to make it? Give you me see? a minute. Okay. Wow. He, the gorge is leaning back. Let me just grab a smoke real quick. Okay. It usually gets me back. Oh, yeah. Smoking might not be the best idea right now. For me, it is. <coughs> oh. oh. So, uh, oh, bra- brain tough. bash. Yeah. Here's what happens. Uh-huh. I get chained inside a jukebox mm-hmm. that's submerged inside a giant malt head made of gasoline. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. And then when someone punches up great balls of fire... On the, on the jukebox. Yeah. Uh-huh. It explodes into a giant fireball. The flaming, the flaming malted. Yeah. And then um, everyone thinks that I'm dead. Yeah. And then everyone's crying. Oh, man, the gorge is gone. Oh, man, long live the gorge. Praise the gorge. Praise the gorge. Everyone's crying. Praise the gorge as if you're some sort of god. I am. You're not a god. Look at me. (laughs) Look at me. Yeah. Yeah. So then everyone's crying, you know, Uh and then all of a sudden, I'm standing across the street on a 58 T-Bird in a crisp new undershirt, Mm -hmm. going, hey, how's about it? Everyone looks over, and they're going, oh, yeah. And then you know what I do? What? I start singing. What do you start singing? You know what I start singing? What's that? We're going to have a chain fight tonight. Everything's going to be all right. You got the gorge by your side. I'm polishing my chain. We're going to do it right tonight. Jeez. <laughs> oh, oh, man. You might not want to sing that anymore. Oh. It seems to take more out of you than you, you think. You can't tell me what to do and what not to do. You know why? Why? Because I tell you what to do and what, and what not. To let me finish. Let, let me finish it for you. And... I'll fi- can I finish it for you? Oh, okay. <laughs> you, you tell me what to do and what not to do. Hello? Roland? Uh, yeah. I had a little uh, blackout for a second. A, go- a gorge out, as I like to call them. They're getting more and more frequent. <laughs> a gorge out. Yeah. Wow. I did a commercial when I was out there, too. Uh, what, what was the commercial? Do you know that product, Flomax? Yeah, yeah. I was in one of those. In one of the commercials? Yeah, but they cut me out of it. <laughs> Why did they cut you out of the Flomax commercial? Well, the ad shows these, these, these guys, and they're on this kayaking trip. Uh-huh. And then I come driving out of the woods on my rascal, whipping my chain around. Mm-hmm. And... <laughs> I got one of those youngsters right in the neck with my chain. It wrapped around his windpipe. Mm-hmm. You could hear it crack. Oh, God. And they cut it out. That's horrible. Uh, Why would you do that? First of all, you said youngsters. How, how, what age are you talking? Those Flomax commercials, those guys don't exactly look young. They were in their late 50s. Youngsters. Yeah. To me. Okay, to you, they're youngsters. Yeah. They couldn't do it, though. Seems like it, They it, needed the stuff. Ugh. What? I don't want to. You're, you're always so gross. Hey. Yeah? Guess who I made an L.A. love connection with? Who's the hottest? <laughs> Who's the hottest? Yeah. Ever. Ever? Yeah. Um. Angelina Jolie? Who? Come on. Like of all time? Of all time. Like Raquel Welch? Uh, no, close. I hotter. Hotter than Raquel Welch? Yeah. Who? Linda Evans. Ugh. What? 
Linda Evans. She's a stone fox. Linda Evans is the hottest ever. Oh, yeah, we were all hot and heavy for several months. Ugh. Uh, but then she dropped me like a hot chain. She dropped you like a hot chain. Why are you chain? laughing? Uh, oh, I never knew that. I always heard that phrase as dropped you like a hot potato. What? Like drop, well, okay. I don't get it. She dropped you like a hot chain. Yeah, she said I wasn't growing as a person. Uh-huh. All I know is that every time I was around her, oh, okay. the, I something see where this, was... I, the, 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 I see where that's going. No, no, no. She did help me, though. Well, how, how, <laughs> how did Linda Evans, your, your, your uh, romantic interest, help you? Well, you know, um, our lovemaking sessions Ugh. were so satisfying <laughs> okay. uh, that uh-huh. I'd forgotten what my mission in life was. And w- what's your mission in life? To make you suck chain. To make, ugh, to make me suck chain. So you want to kill me, like hit me with the chain. Yes. And then make me like eat the the chain that you uh, beat people uh, beat with. Beat you with. You beat me with. Yeah, yeah I okay. have a special chain just for you. It would be totally Christine. Uh-huh. Really? be a new chain? Totally Christine, yeah. Wait, wait, wait. Totally pristine? What's that? Well, that, What'd you call me? I know. What what is the chain? You said it was totally it's unused. Yeah, it's unused. It's in pristine shape. Pristine shape. Is that's the word? No, Pristine. it's. I don't know what you're talking about. It's, it's like the new math or something. Pristine. Yeah. So the way she helped me was, she got me a much better rascal. Okay. Yeah, this one goes uh, went nine miles an hour instead of six. Really? Yeah. Okay. But it still took me forever to get back out here. Okay. Yeah. So you so you've you've spent the last whatever driving just from L.A. Yep. to New Jersey. Absolutely. Now. Yeah. I had a couple missteps along the way. Uh huh. Well, such as. Well, I spent several weeks in the hospital in St. Louis. Mm hmm. I beat up a boxing match. A boxing match. Yeah. Which means you beat up... Everybody. The fighters, the refs, the sexy chicks that carry the, the, the round numbers around, uh-huh, uh-huh. the guy that rings the little bell, yeah. the dinger, yeah. you know, and the guys, uh, the trainers and stuff. You beat all of those people up. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. And then you know what happened? What? The boxing match beat me up really, really, really bad. Uh-huh. How yeah. how bad? Really bad. Are you okay from it? I had a boxing glove in me. Ugh. Okay. Both hands. Ugh. What? Stop. So then I stopped uh, in my hometown of York, PA. Uh-huh. I wanted to check out my old whipping grounds, where I used to swing my chain around. But you know what? What's that? All the guys I used to chain whip are dead. <laughs> All the guys from the old, from the old days. Yeah, uh, I I had to settle with going to their gravestones and whipping them. Whipping their stones. Yes, it was very moving, uh-huh. a very cathartic experience. <laughs> okay, a cathartic experience. Well, you know, a cathartic experience. That's what I said. Exactly, and I agree wholeheartedly. I agree. I'm glad you had a cathartic experience. You know what else I did in York? What's that? I got the chain that I'm going to use on you. Uh-huh. My my old buddy, Old Vern. Yeah. He's the son of Older Vern. Yeah. And uh, they run a, a hardware store in York, mm-hmm. and they cut me the chains just the way I like them. Uh-huh. They have to be light, you know, so you can kind of whip them around, uh-huh. you know. But they also got to be heavy enough to inflict enough pain uh-huh. and torture. Ugh. So you're gonna you're gonna hit me with the chain. Uh yeah. Well that chain looks a little weird. What? I don't know. Is it Wait till you taste it. Oh <laughs> yeah. I, I want nothing. Yeah. They also had a parade for me too. They had a parade in in uh In York. Uh-huh. It was weird though, because the parade kind of started as I was reaching the city limits to go out of town. Uh-huh. 
Well, it sounds like they were running you out of town then. No, they weren't. <laughs> Don't say that. Your hometown of York. Yeah, they love me. Now, except for Officer Harrops. Oh, Officer Harrops. That guy. There's, I guess, one of his. There's an Officer Harrops around here too. I live in Newbridge, a town in New Jersey. Really? Yeah. Oh. There's an, a guy named Officer Harrops there also. That's really weird. Um, what is that on the end of that chain? What do you think it is? Um, it kind of looks like a handgun. That's right. Why? Is that how is that attached on there? It's kind of spot welded on there. You have a, a handgun welded on there. Yeah. Is that is it loaded? Of course it is. Oh. Can you feel it? I'm so. Can s- you feel the wind? No. Th- Man, it's watch it. Four hey. inches from your face. Oh, watch it with that thing. There's a handgun on the end. You're stop. gonna taste it. Okay, stop whipping it around. Stop. No. Stop. Stop. All right. I'll let you live a little longer. Thank you. Maybe. Maybe. Oh, stop it. Maybe man. not. Stop. How did that hand, that gun is loaded? Absolutely, stop yeah. Stop that. All right. I'm okay, Mike. It's a, ha- it's a loaded handgun. Yeah. So you can control the gun? Like De- Define control. Like it's... It's cocked and loaded? Yup. You can fire it when you want to fire it. Not really. It fires when it wants to fire. Can you aim it? Not really, no. I actually almost took part of my cheek off when I was testing it out. <laughs> why? So why do you have the gun on there? It's intimidating, isn't it? It's intimidating, but it just seems like it's as much of a weapon against you as it is for you. It'll probably work at some point the way I want it to. Uh-huh. Don't you think? No. And I'm kind of gambling that it'll be tonight. That the gun you can hit the but you're not you're not worried about the thing shooting you. A little bit, but I think it's going to be worth it. Don't you? I don't. When you die. When I die. Yeah, that'll oh. be worth it for me. I almost didn't make it here. Why, why, why is that? Well, I got into Jersey. Uh-huh. And uh, my rascal was really starting to die. Uh-huh. I got to this kind of wooded area, kind of on the outskirts of town. Mm-hmm. It was really cold at night, and I was using my leather jacket as a tent. Okay. And this nice man came up. He said I could stay with him. Oh, that, that's nice. It's very nice. He had this cool little community there in the woods. Uh Uh-huh. They make all these natural products there. Uh Uh-huh, uh-huh. Like what kind of stuff? Butter, bread, spark plugs, battery acid. Oh, I think I I know who this is. All hemp-based. Yeah, yeah. Everything was hemp-based, but it 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 was his name... um, Johnny. Hippie, yeah. Hippie Johnny? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So you, you, you know him? Yes, I've talked to him before. He seemed cool at the time. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Seemed like a good guy. At the time? Yeah. So I started making these hemp-based M80s. Hemp-based? Wait, like... <laughs> Hemp-80s. Like, uh-huh. hemp eighty. Yeah. So an M80, like an explosive. You've probably seen them at like a Whole Foods or something. I've, n- <laughs> I've never seen a hemp-based M80 or any sort of M80 at he Whole He said he Foods. had good distro. Uh huh. Well, I don't know. I, I, that's just. So he had you making hemp-based M80s. Yeah. The more hemp you use, the louder they are. <laughs> it was great. I was teaching the kids how to throw them right. Teaching kids how to throw M80s. Yeah. How do you throw? What do you mean by throw an M80 right? You know, you got to throw it so it bounces off the kid's chest the right way, so it doesn't go too far away from them. When it explodes. <laughs> Why would you, you can't throw an a, 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 like and what happens to the kid? He gets to hear a really loud bang. If it lands too far away, then he's deprived of the joy of a really loud bang. And he but he get he get his chest uh, ripped open? Mm. Probably not. well. Yeah. Mhm. That didn't really happen that I oh. saw. Oh, oh, yeah. okay, okay. I heard some rumors, though. Uh-huh, uh-huh. So you're, you're making hemp-based M80s, well, teaching kids how to throw them at each other. You don't see anything wrong with that. 
I don't know. But anyway, this guy, Johnny, started to become a nice, total nice, jerk. Nice job changing the subject. What? I don't know. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Stuff happens in life. Yeah, okay. Right? Yeah, uh, that, that, that was just random that this well, stuff is happening. Yeah. It's not a. I know something else that's going to happen. What's that? So you're acting like. Uh, no! Well, come on! Stop! Stop, 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 stop. Right. Stop. You're acting like the. You're acting like it's like a, an act of God that the M80s were being thrown around at each other. Well, I made them so that would make it an act of God. Oh, okay. Great. Bow down to me. No. Come on! I'm not going to. Please. I'm not going to bow down to you. All right. Okay. So this guy Johnny yeah. got to be a real jerk. Hippie Johnny. Yeah, he wanted uh-huh. me to do all the grunt work for him. Uh-huh. So I told him to eat my pipe. Uh-huh. And then he started whipping me with his hemp sash. Uh-huh. Harder than you think it's going to be. Mm-hmm. Oh, man. So uh, <laughs> he was hitting you with his sash? Whipping me with it. With, whipping you oh, with Oh, man. Uh-huh. Yeah. And, and the, I would, you'd think that hemp wouldn't be that... When it's wound really tight, uh huh. Oh man, like a horse whip. <laughs> wow. And I've been horse whipped plenty. So, as a, as someone who has been horse whipped, yeah, you felt that the hemp based sash hurt more. Stung as much, if not more. Wow. Yeah, kind of impressive. That you you want to know what? Yes, that is impressive. Yeah. So we really get into it. Uh huh. And I kind of had the upper edge because I, I had, you know, my gun uh, chain with me. Yeah. So he, he runs off uh-huh. and he locks himself in his palace. Uh-huh. So I organized this, uh, this uprising of all the workers in Mellow Grove. Yeah, yeah, the grounds of his, his whole empire. Yeah, it was just like a scene from that movie, Normal Ray. N- Normal Ray. Yeah, you've never seen Normal Ray. Uh-huh. I thought you were into entertainment. Um, <laughs> I know Norma Ray. Norma. What's normal, Ray? It's that movie about that guy, and he works in a factory. I don't. I don't know what movie. That Ray. Is. Nor. Oh, normal Ray. No, it's well, it's Norma Ray, but we can move on. You don't know what you're talking about. So anyway, we stormed Hippie Johnny's palace. Yeah. And I chained him to his throne. Uh huh. And then we took him. Yeah. And we dumped him in Lake Newbridge. Oh, wow. Oh, man, was he sinking fast. Yeah. But then the weirdest thing happened. Uh huh. What's that? This carp jumped out of the water. A, a, car, a fish, a carp. Yes. Yeah. And it talked. Uh huh. I couldn't believe my eyes or my ears. Well, what did the what did the fish say? It said he's not dead. You don't know the name of the fish, do you? I'm not sure. I think something like Andy. Yeah, I, I've I've actually spoken to that fish. He was wearing a baseball cap that said Andy. <laughs> yes, exactly. That's how I knew. Yeah, I I know. I it sounds kind of had a tood. I very much so. I never thought I would say this. I know that fish. Wow. I've met that fish before. I've spoken to that fish before. That could be a sitcom. I should yeah. talk to Trent about that. I know that fish. I know that fish. Okay, you're writing that down? Yep. You think that's a, got the makings of a sitcom? I think it might, yeah. Uh-huh. Just got to figure out how to make it gory. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah, I guess uh, if it's yeah. Trent L. Strauss, sure. So... So now uh, you, you you dump uh, Hippie Johnny into the into the stream into Lake Newbridge. Yeah. And then uh so you got rid of him. As far as I know, but then yeah. the carp said he's not dead. Yeah. But then the people of Mellow Grove, yeah. They want to be uh, me to be their new leader. Really? Yeah. But I told them I had bigger fish to chain whip. <laughs> okay. So so you you could not run Mellow Grove, no. even, even though you were a hero yeah. to these people. You deposed their uh, the the dictator. Yeah, I was like, I can't do it, guys. I'm sorry. Uh huh. I gotta I gotta do something really good, something, mm-hmm. to, something to free my soul. Mm-hmm. And what's that? Make a guy eat chain. Me, okay. Yeah. That, and that's me. I'm assuming. Yep. Uh-huh. So anyway, I get close to the, to here the studio. Uh huh. And my rascal started to disintegrate about two blocks away. 
Wow. So you actually made it all the way. All the way with two blocks to go. Yeah. And your rascal finally gives out. Yep. It just kind of fell apart. It was so sad. That is a little sad. Yeah. You had driven thousands of miles on it. Absolutely. Mm hmm. But I did end up getting here. Mm hmm. In another vehicle. What was that? Well, I see this kid on the street uh -huh. and he's pushing this, this shopping cart. Uh huh. So I had to trade him something for that shopping cart. And what did you trade him? Well, it was my other chain. Your other chain? Yeah. Okay. It had a, uh, a battery-powered turkey carver at the end of it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. And <laughs> you traded that to some guy with a shopping cart? A kid. A ki How old of a kid? I don't know, like eight. Eight? Yeah. You gave... An eight-year-old, a chain that had what? A battery? Uh, you said a like a battery-powered what? Turkey carver. Turkey carver, yeah. Why would you give that to an eight-year-old? Don't worry, the safety kind of worked. Ugh. So now there's some kid out there with with what sounds like some sort of ultimate weapon. Yeah, I just hope I just hope he's careful with it. Yeah, I. Because it could do a lot of damage. I do too. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. So you, uh, so now you rode the shopping cart here? Yeah. Uh-huh. I pushed it here. And now you're here. Yeah, I need a new rascal, though. Yeah, okay, I, I, I would assume so. You know why? Why? Because I'm going on tour next week. You're going on... <laughs> it never ends. It's like this adventure. Got a lot on my plate. A lot of yeah. adventures, yeah, on my uh -huh. tombstone. Uh-huh. If I ever die, which I probably won't. Uh-huh. It'll say, man, comma... He had a lot of adventures. You think that's what it'll say in your tombstone? I think so, yeah. Man, he had a lot of adventures. Can you think of anything better? Um, you know what? I haven't given a whole lot of thought to what should be on your tombstone. Okay. So, <laughs> please tell me about this tour you're going on. It's with a rock and roll band. Really? Yeah. Who? They're called the Hold Steady. The <laughs> The Hold Steady. Have you heard of them? Yes, I have. Because I, I really haven't. Uh-huh. And in, in, in what capacity are you going to be touring with the Hold Steady? I'm going to be kind of their MC, you know, really riling up the crowd. Uh-huh. You know, like I come out first and I threaten them and I get them riled up. You know, you guys are jerks, you know. I don't know if you're worthy of this band. Uh-huh. Yeah. And then the Hold Steady comes out. Yeah. And they pound their faces into the ground with their music. Okay, they pound the audience's faces into the ground with the music. Yeah. Hey, what do they sound like? Um, you know, they're kind of like a rock group, like kind of a big, powerful, uh, kind of a bombastic sound. Because the way they were pitched to me yeah. was kind of like a cross between Gene Vincent and a book on tape. Huh, that's actually not that far off. Huh. Wow. No. It'll be great, though. I'll be selling a lot of my merch. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> you, you have merch. Absolutely, uh -huh. yeah. What, what kind of merch can people get up for the gorge? Undershirts that look like leather jackets. Mm -hmm. Leather jackets that look like undershirts. Okay. Baseball caps that look like undershirts. Uh-huh. Baseball caps that look like leather jackets. Uh-huh. Yeah, and they all say the gorge on it. Okay. You know what else uh, it says on it? What? Hey, how's about it? <laughs> Which, for people who don't know, was... Is. Is. Or uh, it was the phrase that gave birth to A on Happy Days. Like, that was yeah. the watering down of the phrase. Oh, I still hate that. Oh. Uh-huh. It's really getting me riled. <laughs> that has nothing to do with me. That Come on. Stop. Stop. Oh, stop. Stop, 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 stop. You're going... Did you mention that to Henry Winkler? How much that irritated you? I did, yeah. Uh-huh. He what? acted like he didn't know me, and that he couldn't see me. Uh-huh. He went straight for the phone and called the police. Yeah, what a jerk. Little baby. Yeah, Stupid, yeah. Stupid, weak baby. <laughs> yeah, yeah, what a weakling. He only sees a weird guy with, a, I'm assuming, a chain. Yeah, okay, you don't have to show me the chain. Come on, stop, please. All right. A guy with a chain, and, uh... He calls the police. Yeah, what what a chicken. Uh-huh. You're the chicken. 
<laughs> I, I'm the chicken. What are you What are you doing there? What? What are you putting on your mouth? My lips are a little cramped. Uh huh. Because I was wondering if if people uh, wanted to talk to you at all. You know. Well, like take some calls. Yeah, I'd be. I guess would you be willing to take a phone call or two? Sure. Why not? Okay. 201-209-9368 is the number. Got the uh, Gorch live in the studio. If you have a question for him, you let me know. So, so the hold steady. How long does that tour go for? It's like nine weeks. Wow. That's yeah, we a, go over to Europe too. That's a pretty uh, intense tour. I've never been to Europe. Do you have a passport? What? A passport. You yeah, know, I have a passport. Yeah. What's that? Oh, okay. No, that's not a passport. That's your chain. So you're going I to... Figure I figure I, I go over to England, mm -hmm. and they go, I don't know, whatever they ask you, can I see your stuff, your, your yeah. driver's license? Uh-huh. That's all I need. That's all you need. Yeah. Wow. 201-209-9368. Anybody has a question for the Gorch? We got a couple calls coming in here. Let's see. FMU, you're on the air. Yeah, I just want to talk to the guest. Sure. Hey, how's about it? Hey, I was, hey, I, you sound pretty excited. Um, I just want to say I'm really a fan of your work. Um, and I just want to know what uh, your experiences since you've been in Hollywood have been like. Um, I loved American Splendor. And uh, Pe Mr. Pekar, I think it's uh, an honor to be talking to you. What's Mr. Pekan? What is that? This is, you, who do you think this is? This is Harvey Pekar, right? No, this is the Gorch, Roland Gorchnik. Oh, uh, it sounded like Harvey Picar. No, shut up, Harvey Picar. I don't know what. Do you even know who that is? The guy that called? No, no, the guy. He's the guy. Do you know who Harvey Picar is? No. What does he do? What does he do? Yeah. Yeah, he. Yeah, he's a professional loser. And that guy thinks I sound like a professional loser? I guess, I guess he does, yeah. Oh, man, send that guy over here. Well, don't, don't wave it at me. You're mad at that guy. Come on. You're going to have to pay oh. for his sins. No, stop. Yeah. Stop. Stop. Good. Thank you for setting the chain down. Uh, you all right? Feeling a little weird. What? What, what? You all of a sudden, it's like some weird drop off. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. What were you? Mm. What? You just put more of that stuff on your lips. Yeah. What is that? Well, I, I stopped off at this convenience store in Newbridge mm -hmm. on the way over here. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it called? D uh, das Sieben und der Elf. Das Sieben, that's the 7 and the 11? Yeah. That's right, it is that. I, I saw there were a couple of those in Newbridge now. It was run by this nice German kid. Mm-hmm. And he gave me this complimentary, like, lip balm. Yeah. Along with the carton of cigs I bought. Uh-huh. Now I feel really weird. And really good. <laughs> you okay? Is that what was the stuff? Can I see that tube? It's weird. My arms aren't really moving. Let to me see toss what that it is. to you. Oh, oh, it's blue. You, you. <laughs> Whatever it, it is, feels blue. Really good. Well, it's not lip balm. You know what it feels like? What's that? Being with Linda. Oh, that's so sad. Oh, he just fell over. Let me check on him. Rolling? He's rolling? 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 <laughs> I didn't get chain whipped, I guess. 
Wow, he's really knocked out. <laughs> what do I do now? Mike, what do I do? The gorge is knocked out in here. I guess I should, I guess I should just let him sleep it off. Well, thank you for listening to Best Show Gems, the best of the best show on WFMU. If you like what you just heard, the full-length program is done each and every Tuesday night from 8 to 11 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. You can listen on your radio in the New York, New Jersey area at 91.1 FM or anywhere on the globe at WFMU.org. WFMU.org also has an extensive archiving of all the previous episodes of The Best Show. And you can get more information on the program over at friendsoftom.com. I want to thank a few people, if I could. Martin DeGrell, the producer and compiler of Best Show Gems. Thank you, Martin. Mel Matsuoka, who is the producer of the full-length three-hour Best Show podcast each and every week. And the protector of the Best Show and WFMU archives. Thank you, Mel. John Worcester, obviously, thank you. Associate producer Mike and everybody at WFMU, thank you so much. If you like what you just heard, check out the full-length show. Uh, you can download the podcast or listen live at WFMU.org.